Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number eight in our new, our improved, our most excellent Arduino tutorial series. And what we are going to talk today about is pulse width modulation. Now in lesson seven, we taught you a new command on the Arduino and that command was analog write, right? We started with digital writes where you could turn a pin on Digital write high turns it on, 5 volts. Digital write low turns it off, 0 volts. So you could turn something on or off by using digital write high and digital write low. But then you said, what about the in-between values? What if we want 1 volt? What if we want 4 volts? And what we learned in Lesson 7 is, is that you have a command in the Arduino which can sort of do that, and that is the analog write command. Now, what do I mean by sort of? Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about how the analog write command works today, and it works through something called PWM, which is pulse width modulation. And that is what we are going to talk about and that's what we're going to learn about. And you're going to start again, this series is about pulling up the hood, looking under the hood, digging deeper, pulling back the onion, and understanding a lot more of the real magic that is happening with the Arduino. So I need you to pour yourself a big mug of iced coffee, no sugar, black coffee over ice, and I need you to get out the most excellent Super Starter Kit by eLego, the Uno R3 Project Kit. If you haven't gotten one of these yet, check out the link down in the description. Hook a brother up, click on the link and order one. All of this new series is going to be based on this kit. And so we will be working with this kit for a long, long time. We are already on lesson number eight and there are many, many more lessons to come. But I digress. Okay. What I need you to do is go ahead and set up again that circuit that we had uh, done in lesson number seven. And so we can go back and look at this again. Uh, very simple circuit. I have a uh, wire coming off of pin nine. It is going to one leg of a resistor, current limiting resistor, going to the long leg of the LED, short leg of the LED, comes back to the uh, ground on the Arduino. And I'll give you more details of how to hook this up in lesson seven. So if you're not sure of what I'm talking about, you can go back and look at lesson seven seven, or you can look at, where did it go? Uh, this circuit, and it should sort of make sense, right? We're using an Arduino pin for five volts. We go through a 330 ohm resistor. We go through the LED, and then we come back through ground. So this is all explained in, in lesson number seven. Okay, let me... Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about what we did last time. Okay, we came in and we started doing these. Uh, this is the simple code that we are on pin 9, so we called red pin 9. And then here we created a variable called brightness, and you can set the brightness and then you can do your pin modes in the void setup. And then in the void loop, we told you about this new, uh, this new command, which was analog write. And so let's look a little bit more about this analog write command and exactly how it works. And so let's see. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and set the brightness to zero. OK, so we will set the brightness to zero. And if I download this analog write red pin to a brightness of zero, this is a lot like doing a digital write of red pin low, right? And so let me go ahead and uh, you can be watching the LED here. And when I download this, what happens? Boom! Exactly what you expect. It turned the LED off because you're setting the brightness to zero. Now we talked in the uh, lesson seven that the values you can use are zero to 255. That's basically two to the eighth, and so that's like an eight-bit number. Between zero and 255 is two to the eighth different positions or incre increments that you can do. That's why it's that kind of odd number, 255. And so a brightness of zero, if we 
set that, that would be equivalent to zero, and a brightness of 255 would be equivalent to five volts, or the same thing as a digital write. Hi, I'm kind of rambling a little bit, so I will try to get a move on here to the actual point. And what we are going to do is we are going to come in. Wow, look at this incredible shot I have. We are going to be able to look at the signal that is coming off of the Arduino and look at it on an oscilloscope. And basically an oscilloscope just shows you a picture of the voltage that you are getting out of something like the Arduino. And so you see here we have a cable that comes out with a red and a black lead. And where we hook these on the circuit will allow us to take a picture of the voltage at that point. So I will show you how I hook it up by coming over here. And so we're going to get the red to that top leg of the resistor because that will look exactly precisely at the voltage coming off of pin 9. And then we can also hook it over here to the bottom leg of the LED right there, which is connected to ground. And so by hooking it up in such a manner, we are looking at precisely the voltage that is coming off of pin 9. So now that I have that hooked up, I am just really, really very particular about having things sit square. I hate them to sit tilted. So I'm constantly adjusting so that things are square. That's pretty good. Okay, I don't know. Is anybody else like that? Leave a comment below. Does it bother you if things are kind of crooked? Okay, let me know. Leave a comment below. But we are going to go to our most fantastic shot <clears throat> where we are looking here at the voltage, a picture of the voltage that is coming off of the Arduino. Well, what did we set the Arduino to? We wrote a zero, and so we would expect zero volts out. If we look at this, it is coming straight across right in the middle, which is zero divisions. Okay, and so we told it to output a brightness of zero or zero volts. All right, we're getting zero volts. What would be the next thing that we could do? We could write 255, and 255 is the maximum value, and so what would we expect out? We would expect the full 5 volts out. And then we would also expect, when we download the, uh, the 255, uh, we would expect the LED to come on. And so let's come over here, let's download it. Got the happy little green bar, and boom! The red LED is on full brightness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's come over here and let's look at the oscilloscope. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on the oscilloscope. Remember, it was down here, but now it is up like this is uh, one division, two divisions, about 2.4 divisions, okay? And the knob is set on 2 volts per division. And so if I have 2.4 divisions times 2 volts per division, that is telling me that that's an output voltage of about 4.8 volts. Now understand the thing about an oscilloscope is it's really intended to show you a picture of the waveform. It doesn't show you an exact value. If you wanted an exact value, you would go get a digital voltmeter and read the voltage. Uh, the, the nice thing about the oscilloscope is it shows you a picture of the voltage, but it's not exactly accurate. And so where we're getting 4.8 volts, that is really pretty good and, and about as close as you would expect working with a uh, working with a oscilloscope. Let me see. Let me make sure that I had that grounded out good. Yeah, that was good. And so that is, uh, that's probably about as accurate as we're going to get. So what's going to happen if I come over here and I need to show you this view again. So what happens if I come over and I write a zero brightness? Okay, keep your eyes on this right here where my pen is pointing, and now I'm going to download. Boom! It goes to zero volts. All right, I'm going to go back to 255. 
boom, it pops up to 5 volts. It is behaving exactly the way that we would expect it. All right. Well, let's do a half, right? What would, if we wanted, instead of 5, if we wanted 2.5 volts, that would be like... <clears throat> That would be like 255 divided by 2, because that would be half of 5. We would put in like 127. And so we're going to come over here, and we're going to put in 127 for the brightness. And then that should make the LED half brightness. And then this should come down halfway to like uh, a little over 1 division, right? So let's download it. Uh-oh. Uh what happened? Well, the LED went to half brightness, but we have something strange going on on the oscilloscope, something very strange. So let's zoom in. So when we set a brightness of 127, we were expecting, instead of being up here at 5 volts, we were expecting to come down to 2.5 volts. But do you see what's happening? It's simulating 2.5 volts by switching back and forth between 5 and 0, 5 and 0, and it's at 5 half the time, and it's at 0 half the time, so it's averaging, it's averaging 2 and a half volts. Does that make sense? It is averaging 2 and a half volts. So when we say, like, do an analog write of 127 for 2 and a half volts, it doesn't give us 2 and a half volts, it gives us 5, 0, 5, 0. Five, zero. Also, let's look and see what kind of period this has. So we start here, and then we go 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like about 4.2 divisions. So we have 4.2 divisions, and it is set on 0.5 milliseconds per division. So I'll multiply by 0.5 e to the negative 3.5 milliseconds. So that has a period of about, let me get this here. It has a period, I'm getting my calculator set up. Uh, it has a period of about four milliseconds, okay? It's got a period of about four milliseconds, and what this is doing is it's staying at five volts for two milliseconds, and then it is staying at zero for two milliseconds, with that averaging out to uh, about two and a half volts. So that is called pulse width modulation. So you have four millisecond period, and then how much of that period do you stay on and how much of that period do you stay off? And so let's get a really dim number, like let's set it to 10. And we would expect 10 to be 10 divided by 255. We would expect that to be, or let's see, 10 uh, divided by 255 times 5. We would expect that to be about 0.2 volts. Okay. And so let's download that. And I, oh my goodness, so look at that. It is, uh, and it, it is where you can barely even see how long it is on. I'm trying to get it to trigger a little bit differently. It's kind of hard to trigger when you're like this. Let's see if I can. Okay, that's pretty good. There you go. Okay, so you can see that it is on for just a very, very small amount of time. It's at 5 volts and then off most of the time. And so you can see that this would be equivalent to an average of about 0.2 volts because I'm on for 5 volts for a very short period of time and then off most of the time. What if we went instead of 10? Let's see if we can even see it if we go to 1. It might get so small that we can't even see it. Okay. Oh, you can sort of see it, just that barely tick there. So it's like here, here, here. Do you notice as we're doing this, the period isn't changing. The period is still the same width, 4 milliseconds. But we're just leaving it on for a short period of time. Or let's put it at 10. 
a longer period of time. Okay, do you see how that's on longer? What if we go to 100? It's on for even longer. What if we go for, uh, that's not liking the trigger there very much, okay. What if we go to 200? That's gonna be on for most of the time and then just off for a little bit. And then what if we go to like 250? Okay, and that is on almost the whole time, which is that one little click, uh, that one little tick down. So what you can see is pulse width modulation has a constant period, and it's just changing how, what fraction of that period the signal is on versus the signal is off, thereby creating not two and a half volts, but if you average over the period, an average of two and a half volts. And so that is how the analog write function on Arduino really works. And what we're really getting is pulse width modulation, which we have kind of explained today. Now, the other thing that I will show you is what if you really wanted an analog voltage? If you really wanted an analog voltage, you could put a capacitor across there and the capacitor would smooth out that up and down and give you the average value. For something like this, I am using about a thousand microfarad capacitor. And so that is a pretty darn big capacitor capacitor. Uh, I'm going to come over here back to this shot. Is this the shot we want? Yeah, that's a good shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this oscilloscope off. And then these capacitors, a lot of times they have a polarity to them. So you got to make sure that you're putting the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. And so I'm going to hook this across the voltage that's coming out of the Arduino. Look it across there like that. So I go the positive lead to the positive voltage and the negative lead of the capacitor to the uh, ground. And now I'm going to hook the oscilloscope back up. Okay. And so now let's put in some values. Let's put in and okay. Since you can kind of see this, I'll just go to the oscilloscope full screen again. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, no, let's go back. Okay, so you can see what I'm coding. So let's put in 255, download it. Okay, and boom, we are up to the full five volts. What if I put one? 127, which would be about half of that. Boom. You see, I come down to about half. Now, what you can see is there's a little waviness in that signal. And what that waviness is coming from is, is that the capacitor doesn't completely smooth it out, but it gets it pretty darn smooth. So let's go down by half again. Let's go down to about 60. Okay, and look at that, we're down to about half of a, half of a division there. So what you can see is, is that the pulse width modulation for a lot of things like an LED, it really works because what's really happening is it's blinking the LED on and off really fast, but it's blinking it so fast that you can't see it and it does look like dimmer or brighter. Same, times, same thing a lot of times with a motor, this, uh, it'll sort of average it out as well. That's the way pulse width modulation works. If you want a true analog signal, you're going to have to look more into capacitors and use a capacitor to smooth out the signal. Does this make sense? I feel like I rambled a little bit too much in this. Uh, I feel like I rambled a little bit too much in this video. Would really love to hear your comments down below. Do you understand pulse width modulation? Do you understand what the Arduino is really doing when you give an analog write command? Kind of say it back to me. Let me see that you actually understand what's going on. Really enjoy it when you guys comment. Like it even more when you give me a thumbs up or share the video. And uh, hope you'll stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more great videos coming. Don't forget this series, Ice Coffee, No Sugar. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will, I will talk to you guys later.